Hey guys, welcome back to another Princess Connect. Hi, I'm Lace and today we're going to be talking about Jun. She may or may not be released next, although you can actually start farming her shards via dungeon, which is the most unreliable way of doing it, so don't do that. Spoiler, I think she will be. She just got added into the game, as you can see from a little hot patch a couple of hours ago. And Jita's banner is about to finish in about five hours for us, so it's just got to be. It's just got to be Jun. Right? It's just got to be. Imagine they hit us with a sneaky Ilya. I mean, I wouldn't complain. I digress. Let's get back to it. So before that, let me just give a quick update on the last video. So it was actually heavily requested that I make this bad boy spreadsheet over here. If you guys haven't seen it from Reddit, I'll drop the link below. It's kind of evolving. I got a lot of feedback, but generally like the everything that I'm saying, the rationale, it's it's for the most part, right? It's mainly people like going like ums and ahs about the rankings. Like, oh, mm, this guy is good. This guy's not good. Actually, actually, I think that this guy is better than it's really hard for for us to all come to like a common agreement, I suppose. But this is this is not a bad start. If you guys want, I can run through this again. I did add a lot more detail than my last video, but otherwise, let's just get back into Jun. Uh, I, I mean, into the topic of Jun. Let's loot. So Jun's a great tank, and the main purpose of her is to sit in front of Kari. Actually, that's not entirely true. Rima, Miyako, Kuka, they all sit in front of Kari. But the bottom line is that Kari is like one of the best damage dealers for a clan battle, and Jun is also one of the greatest tanks. For now, guys, don't cancel me for making like baseless claims. So let's get back to the synergy later, and let's talk more about about Jun herself. So, so she's voiced by Ayako Kawasumi, who is also Saber's voice actor. So if you're all Saber simps, I see you, I see you there, then there is probable reason to actually go ahead and roll for her. Also, since she's completely clad in iron like this, but if you wanna peek at what's underneath, here is her summer version. Voila. So with that being said, let's jump into her numbers. So let's start with her stats and skills. So pretty normal stats. So I actually think she has among the highest HP of all of the tanks, if not everyone in the game. Good amount of physical defense, good amount of magic defense, and there's more magical defense that's about to come from her EX skill. On that note, let's pop over to her skills. Her Union Burst is a self barrier that absorbs both magic and physical damage. So it's kind of the same outcome as if she was boosting her own physical or magical defense. Except if you think about it, barriers negate damage straight up, whereas boosting defense is damage mitigation, right? So you take less damage. Damage. Boosting defense means you might have to top up, but if the barrier is enough to soak the damage, you don't have to heal right after the barrier gets popped. Regardless, both are great and this is completely fine. I think in the long run, you probably don't have to worry too much about the differences between a barrier and a freaking defense. Moving on to skill one, she actually recovers a single nearby ally with the lowest amount of HP by a small amount. So quite decent, it's sustained, she's a tank, it fits, right? And do note the language, it says nearby, so she can't actually heal your Hiori that's getting hit in the back by that freaking heart today. But the range does extend to about the middle of the entire range from the front to the back. So that's about like Saren. So usually after Saren, she can't heal them, but everything before Saren, you should be good. Not much more to say about this. Pretty solid skill. It could be worse. Like it could be a damage skill for no reason. <laughs> All right. Skill two, the juicy skill. So it's a physical damage debuff. So mm, mm, on a tank, it doesn't make sense. Actually, it does. Having a tank that's able to actually live through all the shit, like getting smacked by the enemy and constantly debuff the enemy's physical defense, this this increases your damage output. Wait, that, that actually sounds like really good. The best defense is a good offense, am I right? And honestly, she gets to do both. So back to her EX skill again, again, it's just a boost in her magical defense, which makes her a very respectable general tank, just like Nozomi. Now you can't see it here, but if we pop over to her bond level bonus, it is HP, some physical defense, and a little bit of magical defense. Of course, I will take this over attack or crit rate or something, but this is good. It's damage mitigation. It's good, but it's very standard. And if it wasn't like this, then I'd be worried. Position wise, she's about 135. So she's actually standing 10 units in front of Kari and behind all of the other tanks. This is good because she's actually the first three star natural that can stand in front of Kari. And this three star natural kind of thing, it actually does have a lot of impact later on that we'll talk about. So if we come down to her attack pattern, it's actually a skill two into a skill one for the initial action. And then her loop actually goes from attack, attack, skill two, attack, skill one, which is not too bad. It's all right. Like her skills are pretty good. I can see why they would add so many attacks in between. So the last thing that we can talk about is her unique equipment. So as you all know, unique equipment actually boosts the skill one of all characters. For Jun, if you remember her heal, which you should, because that was like two minutes ago, probably, then you will notice that it actually boosts it from, from a small HP recovery to a medium. But the big thing is, is it actually gives the target a small physical attack and action speed buff to the target. Like imagine Yukari or your Makoto gets hit, they get healed and they get buffed. 
I don't know, guys. It sounds pretty good to me. All right, let's start talking about her practice. So let's start with the clan battle. Now, as we all know, I've talked about her a couple of times now, but Jun is a superstar for CB. She's not the superstar, but she is definitely a superstar. Physical defense down, tanky, heal to her allies. There's nothing that this woman can't do except taunt, which you should be fine without in CB. The heal is massive because a lot of the bosses that you're actually going to be facing in CB, they're going to have AOE attacks and they're going to predominantly attack the front line, which is where Jun is healing. So she'll be able to heal your Makoto, Eriko, Kari, Shinobu, etc. Also remember that you want to take as much DPS as possible. So if you have healing coming from a tank, then you might be able to take less healers and more damage dealers. However, as I've repeated it about 5,000 times, the most important part of her kit is the defense down. So combining this with Makoto's defense down, it's probably the closest you'll get to like optimal amount of physical defense down on a unit that you can go. As for Arena, she's tanky. You see that shield, especially straight out of the box. But if you've been playing a while, like since launch or soft launch, she'll probably be a bit harder to fit into your teams. The reason is that she's not actually farmable yet. So she'll eventually get outscaled by the other tanks. So it's the Kuka, the Nozomi, the Miyako. My Nozomi is freaking five stars now. Ekarin, Lima, etc. These are all super farmable. Some might be faster than the others, but but I think you do get the point. Jun actually eventually does become farmable and is actually also partially farmed through events. But enough of her downsides, let's talk about her strengths. If you insist on using Jun in Arena, then it's going to be similar to how it goes in CB, right? So you're going to be attacking teams that don't have Miyako because you'll be running physical attackers with Jun to make sure that you get the most out of all of them, right? The synergy between the physical defense down and the physical damage. Miyako is the counter because dodge, dodge, dodge. Oh my God. If any of you are highish in arena, y'all already know freaking Miyako everywhere. All I see is Miyako. She's inevitable. She's inevitable. But back to Jun. I mean, I guess there's not much left to say about Jun for Arena. That's really it. You just have to build a physical team around her. Other PvE like Luna Tower, Story, Events, etc. Very good tank for PvE because most of the time physical damage is like completely fine until you run into those rock things. With Makoto and Jun together, you'll be shredding through everything easy peasy, especially bosses because the remember the, the, the debuff is actually single target. A lot of the events in particular are going to feature bosses. So she'll actually dramatically speed up the amount of time that you need to spend farming. However, to be honest, she's not critical to PvE and definitely not critical to Arena at all. So you can definitely make do without her. Now the age old question, should you pull? For the people who are watching this video and you guys are just starting out, rejoice because you can have one of the most optimal starts that you can have right here, right now. You guys are looking for Makoto in the first guaranteed three-star role and then Jun in the next 20 or 30. Pretty straightforward, right? Get Makoto, get Jun, you freaking profit. Otherwise, let's talk about the vets or the lads who have been around for a while. A lot of clans are going to be making Jun like a mandatory compulsory unit, kind of like wearing a uniform. Makoto and Jun or kick. Oh, that's the secret message today, guys. You already know what to do with it. Drop it down in the comments please. Let's make it very clear. If you're not interested in clan battle, you pass. She's good if you're mildly interested in her, but she is not critical. Remember, she's only critical to clan battle. For competitive players, a freaking rolling boy. Like I said, a lot of people will give you the boot if they don't. Honestly, I'm thinking about taking the boot because I want to save up for my waifus. But what do you know? I might toss in like 30 pulls or so. We'll see. See what I get. I don't know. Maybe I get her. Maybe I don't. But that's because I'm in it for the waifus, my guys. Okay, so let's talk memory shards and ascension. So ascensions obviously will cost divine amulets at this time because she's just not farmable. You don't have any ways of getting her right. However, she will one day be available to farm through hard stage. I think it's like 14, 3 ish. And in five to seven months time, assuming that we are following the Japan timeline, we will also be receiving an event in which we can farm Jun and Yukari. For clan battle, remember that ascension actually only really boosts your stat. She's mainly there for the defense down and like ascending, it just doesn't contribute to the skill. Only the skill level actually contributes to the amount that she defense downs. For these reasons, I would choose to keep her at three stars and to not ascend her. If you really want to use for arena, I would still advise against it. But as I previously stated, you do need to actually use divine amulets for her if you want to be able to have her keep up with the others. Eventually, we'll have the five star cookers five star Miyako is five star Nozomi is way faster than we'll ever get at five star Jun. So let's wrap this up with a summary because that was quite a lot. Jun is a really well-rounded tank, really good decent stats and she's got a on-demand barrier, a heal for the frontliners and a juicy juicy defense down. She's a queen in clan battles and great at other PvE but she doesn't really perform that well for arena. Therefore you roll for her if you're a competitive CB player but otherwise you could pass. Only ascend her if you really love her because otherwise my recommendation is that she stays at three stars. Last thing to remember, I completely forgot about this, but remember that she is part of the standard pool. She's not a limited character. She will be added to the standard pool after she is added to the game. This means that you could actually end up getting spooked by her when you're rolling on like prefez banners. That being said, that's the end of the video, guys. Jun is finally here. I've finally been able to give like a deep dive analysis. I hope you guys like this. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Today's secret message was Makoto and Jun. 
or kick. If you guys know what to do with the secret message, drop it down in the comments below. I would really appreciate it. It tells me that a whole bunch of you guys watch the video and I just love seeing that pop up. Kind of like a badge of completion for my videos. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. If this video has helped you in any way, shape or form, consider liking it, subscribing, following and all the other stuff. But with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.